He has three sons and speaks proudly of each. And for some, that is highly controversial. His name is LeVar Ball, grew up in South L.A., and he's joining us now on the show. All right. So the... The lightning rod of basketball, amateur basketball in the world. So when you say these things, and then the next day you're going to the Internet, were you surprised how your comments were taken? Uh, not surprised. I really don't care. Because anytime you say something, you're going to have 50% of the people that like it and 50% that don't. That's how you get that... Uh, conversation going on right right so initially uh one of the things i've said i don't love the steph comments but you know people were critical of serena and venus's father richard mm. and it worked and a uh, tiger woods father eldrick oh boy he's rigid and it worked now we have the marinovich example mm. but that always felt way over the top to me we also have archie manning and jack elway telling mm. their sons don't go to those crappy nfl teams mm. so is it out of love or business when you have these strong opinions? Where does it come from? These strong opinions are mine. Like I said, people try to compare me to, to Venus. Uh, they're playing ten tennis. That's a one-person sport. Golf, Tiger Woods, one person. Um, the other guy, I have three sons that are, I've been saying the same thing all the time since they was babies. I used to tell people, hey, you want to play against the best 10-year-old in the world? He's right in the backyard. And people would laugh. Because <laughs> they don't want to believe that the best player is in Chino Hills in the backyard. Well, you didn't send your kid, like most parents, to a prep school or an academy. You sent him to the local public. Right. Why? I've always told him, it's not the school to make the dude. It's the dude to make the school. You got all these schools and don't nobody come out of them. Nobody worries about the school. But once people are successful coming out of the school... Oh, yes. That's why everybody's saying now, nobody ever knew about Chino Hills. Now that my boys have made it a basketball powerhouse, oh, I want to go to Chino Hills. It's interesting because these AAU teams, it's pretty funny as a parent. Uh -huh. And I had a daughter that was pretty athletic, but she, she, she was social as well. Mm -hmm. It's a for-profit business. So mm -hmm. sometimes as a parent, you'll be sitting in the stands in Philadelphia watching a team from Denver and St. Louis play in Philadelphia. And right. my takeaway is... Why well, aren't we just back home in Denver? Right. So this stuff's all pro for profit business. And you went right into the face of that and said, I'm not going to do I'm going to create my own. Exactly. So you said, screw this stuff and tell the people the story that you created your own team. I created my own team for my boys to get better and do stuff our way. Uh, there was no way people were going to take Lonzo, Jello and Mello and let all three of them start on their AAU team. They would want Lonzo and be like, you know what? The other two have time. They're not going to let an 11-year-old play in a 17 open division or a 12-year-old. But I created that for my boys. And the AAU thing, I mean, people sometimes, when everything goes bad, they say, oh, it's because of AAU. But check this out. If you got these kids with all this talent to come from a raggedy neighborhood, if they wasn't playing basketball 24-7, the AAU is saving them from doing some other stupid things. And the AAU, the only thing is the coaching that kind of drives the kid. Sometimes you can have a great coach or you can have one that's just looking for that money. Right. Here's the thing. My boys, we're not needy for the money. Usually, but people with all the talent that my boys have yeah. come from a lower income neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Give him the new socks and the new Jordans. He'll play for your team. You, you went to Washington State, played some college yes, hoop. I played college hoop at Washington State for a year. Anybody that can endure Pullman, Washington. Hey, why do you think I left? <laughs> <laughs> they try to add, I mean, that game was too slow out there for me. You could throw a rock through the town. I know it. I went to Easter. I was by Spokane. That was the oh, high life. Oh, Spokane, Washington. That man. was a high life. Wow. You're, you're in the sticks out in Pullman. Man, man Pullman ain't in the sticks. And I'm from L.A. South Central, so you know I thought it was like, what's going on? When they told me one day, they said, hey, LaVar, you want to go to Idaho? And I was in Pullman for the first time. And I'm like, I ain't got time to get on no plane. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing that it was like a 10-minute drive. I'm like, oh, no. So, uh, Charles Barkley now, do you, do you – let's go back to your Steph Curry. My son's going to be better than Steph. Right. If you could do it again, would you pull it back and say no? And here's the thing. I don't pull anything back. Whatever I say, I say. It's just like what, what Charles Barkley is saying with all these guys. If Charles thought like me, maybe he'd win a championship. Oh, that hurts. Oh, no, yeah, it hurt. Because he's saying sometimes when stuff come out of people's mouth, it's just stupid. Guess what? You talking too. So everybody has an opinion how things work. I don't, I don't care about that. I put the, the goals up high, just like I was saying that my son is better. I know what my boy's about. I know what work he put in. It's not a one-on-one -on -one sport. But if it is one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to take the taller, faster, stronger guy. Did you uh, – there's always that line as a parent between supportive and right. 
maniacal. Uh -huh. Do you ever say to yourself, uh, was there ever a point where one of them didn't like basketball as much? I mean, where is that line for you as a dad? No, none of them. Like I said, what my boys are doing, they're playing basketball because of the passion of it. I don't push my boys to do anything. I'll lead them. And if you follow, that's what you want to do. That's good. I put them in baseball and, and, and football, but they took to basketball as when you're in football, you only can play up a couple of years because then the physicality comes in, you're playing tackle. Right. But just like Melo, Melo playing against, when you're 11 playing against 17, 18, you're not going to get killed if, you, if you're running on that court. He's like a little rabbit, little speed racer. He just come in front. Now, he's 15. He's a sophomore at Chino. He's going yes. to UCLA. Yes. And then your oldest son is Lonzo. He's 19. He could be right. the number one pick. Right. And then you have a senior at Chino. So two of your kids right now, both committed to UCLA, are, are at Chino. Right. Now, do you, did one of them scored 92 points. And my takeaway was, oh, God, I don't want to see that stuff. Right. I, I didn't like that. Oh, of course you didn't. You know why you didn't like it? And a lot of people, everybody who doesn't like it, wasn't at the game. So, so if you see these seen... highlights, you're like, oh, I don't like no kid doing that. But at the game, everybody was clapping like, is he going to score again? Again? He looks it was oh, cherry entertaining. LeVar is cherry picking, isn't hey, he? Hey, check that out. I love cherries. And if you're going to let me sit back there and cherry pick without putting somebody back there, you just don't know how to coach. All so right. it's okay. If, actually, if you cherry pick, you should score every time because it's five on four. Now, now, if, if when you send your kids to UCLA, yes. I can hear some of my audience saying, oh, LeVar, you're probably calling the coach every day. Here's how to coach my son. No. Are you the hands-on dad for, for Alford? No, no, no. I ask Alford anybody. They don't see me up there unless it's game time. My boys, you know what you get when you get them. And like I said, just like Melo committing at such an early age to UCLA. 15, yeah. Steve Alford, he committed at 13. Steve Alford has seen him play from 11 to 13 and put in work. And I would bet my money, like, man, he's evolving like this. Let's get him now if he'll commit. How about this? Okay, so we, we have some video on Lonzo. And I said it the other day, the NFL, half the league is undrafted. America uh -huh. gives you a lot of football talent. Right. America doesn't give you a ton of elite basketball talent. College oh, no. basketball gives you about three guys a year that can play. And so that's why O.J. Mayo had some issues, mm -hmm. still went third. Michael Beasley had issues, still went second. Right. I'm not going to really worry about a dad who's hyping his son up. That, that's not going to deter me from taking Lonzo number one or number two. Right. He does have an unorthodox shot. Yes. What if the NBA says, we got to change his shot? Wrong. They're well, what, not going to change his shot. What if they want to? Hey, here's the thing. Nobody's going to want to if it's productive. I have three sons that shoot the ball, and they shoot the lights out, and not one of them had the same form because I've always taught them, perfect your form. The best shooters in the world, they don't all shoot the same. Reggie Miller shoots different than Larry Bird. Larry Bird shoots different than Ray Allen. Man, it's a different look. Damian Lillard had a little bit of a twitch in his too. A lot of people got twitches in it, but if you perfect your shot, something that you do, you don't change nothing. Let's say Lonzo has a perfect form shooting all on top of his head, and he can't make a bucket. Guess what? Who cares? But if you can shoot it around your neck and kick it up with your elbow and it keep going in, <laughs> they're going to say, hey, man, keep doing what you're doing. Now, you said – now, let's, let's, let's clarify the Laker comments because I, I live in Los Angeles, uh -huh. so I'd like to see your son play for the Lakers. Right, right. Uh, Selfishly, I like going to NBA games. Uh -huh. uh, but what if, what if uh, Brooklyn gets him? If Brooklyn gets him, he gets him. Here's the thing, the comment, that I did a little show in the radio station up in Tucson, and I said, Lonzo's going to be a Laker. I did not say Lonzo's only going to play for the Lakers. Lonzo's job, he wants to get to the league. It doesn't matter what team gets him. I prefer him to play for the Lakers because all my family is here as far sure. as the mom and dad and brothers and sisters or whatever. They like to go watch him play out here. But whatever team he goes to, he's going to go to that team and lift that team up. So it's not a big deal of saying, well, Alonzo will only play for the Lakers. I'm going to speak it into existence that I feel that I'm so lucky that he's going to end up a Laker. When you started Big Baller Brand, now I'm talking to LeVar Ball, grew up in South L.A. He's got three sons, the oldest being Lonzo Ball, then Leangelo, and then you, you call him Mello. It's La Mello. It's La Mello, and the other one's Leangelo and Lonzo. We just go by the last parts of their names, Zoe, Jello, and Mello. Okay, so you created Big Baller Brand, yes. and, and I, I will say this as somebody who left a company to come to another company so I could own some of my content. Mm -hmm. That was a big part that didn't really get talked about much is I understand what you're doing. You're saying, why should I pay Nike and Adidas and Puma? And So right. you create your own brand. Yes. Now, my takeaway is if Lonzo's really, really good. Right. 
and becomes and I, when I watch him play, he's very unselfish. Mm-hmm. He's he would be a fun guy to play with. Right. He passes. He moves the ball ahead. He's not too ball centric. Right, right, right. He, that eventually, if, if it really comes down to if he's good and fun, and you can sign one player, then you got a real business here. Do you feel already Nike Adidas hovering around you? You are the enemy to them. Of course. You are the rival to Nike, and they're a big corporation. They would love nothing more than to squish LeVar Ball. Of course. And you sense it. Here's the thing. They blockbusters, and the big baller brand is Netflix. And you know what happened to blockbusters. If you don't change, guess what's going to happen? There's a red box everywhere. So you're never going to go to Nike. I'm not going to say I'm never going to go to Nike. Like I said, they can co-brand with us. That's what I'm looking for. Co-brand. What co-brand. The- and everybody's saying, well, how come LeVar didn't go with LeBron James, like, like LeBron James uh, brand? He don't have a brand. That's a brand that Nike created. Let him try to go somewhere with that King sign and take it from Nike. No, you can't do that. These triple Bs, they mine. So basically, if Nike came and says, we'll pay you this, right. but we're not giving up the big baller brand, you can buy us out, uh-huh. we can be part of it, that's why you're bringing it out. Yes. Okay. Like I said, these three Bs is on his hat, it's going to cost you one of them. Does your son, after you said that Steph Curry thing, didn't Lonzo say, Dad, God, no, just stop with that, Dad? I don't have one of those sons. What, what, what kind of sons do you have? One that's not going to say, Dad, you shouldn't do that. What did he say? Hey, what are you gonna, he ain't going to ask me nothing. Why? He's just going to keep rolling. My boy got my back. He's my son. I've been taking care of him all his life. So whatever I say, even if it's wrong, he rolling with his pops. My, all my boys are like that. Yeah, but if he was in the car on the way to a Chino Hills game, Dad, listen, nobody's watching us now. If he said that, I said, you ain't my son. My son don't talk like that. Oh, come on. My son don't say, oh, Dad, you know what? What does your son say? He don't say nothing. He's, He's like, what you want to do, Dad? We good. He doesn't say that every day. Hey, only You never had that. a bad day. He's Dude, never pushed back. You should want him to. How you going to push back if I'm taking care of you? You can push back on your own. Get out my house. You can push anywhere you want. Oh, but until then, do what I do. Let me follow. Hey, lead you. If you want to go your own way, you go, he's going to grow into a man. I get that. But I kind of got a good feel for what's going on right sure. now. He hasn't lived long enough to see certain things. Sure. So all I can do, I can't make you do anything, but I can guide you. I feel a person can do anything they damn well please. You just have to surf. You have to take the consequences, whether they be good or bad. It's just like this. Hey, man, do you think man can fly? Yeah, you can jump your ass off a building and fly for a long time until you hit the <laughs> ground and crack your skull, but are you ready for that? That's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah. Okay. Hey, we appreciate you coming on the show because, uh, you know, I, we had to ask these questions, and you answered all of them. And uh, so what's it like growing up in the ball house? Is it hoops all day? It's, it's probably it's, – it's fun. It's loud. Hoops, dominoes, whatever we do. How many pool. kids in the house? It's just my three boys and me and my wife. And it's just a lot of... Man, we have a ball. Oh, that's very clever. Ah! Hey, good luck to you, man. Hey, man, it's a pleasure. It's nice. Pleasure. I met you before. Up I met you a while back. Yeah. Burbank. Yes, yes. Beautiful downtown Burbank. Yeah, we just passed it through, man. We're, we're running into each other a lot more because I know it's going to be a lot more things as my boys are growing up. I may have to call you for tickets to UCLA because I'm known as a USC homer, so I may have to hey, call you. Hey, you can be anywhere you want. All I want to do is let people just watch my boy of what it is. Basketball and sports is entertainment. Instead of going to the movies, come watch the ball, boys. That's all it is.